Hi, my name is Alan Kellogg. I'm the Director of Communications for the Perry Local Schools. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to start with some administrative updates and we'll finish off with a Q&A session. If you have any questions, you can email them to me at kelloggA at perry-lake.org. Uh, and then we're going to try to get as many questions in as we can tonight in the brief amount of time we have allotted. But if we don't get to your question, we will do the best uh, we can to make sure someone reaches out to you with, with an answer. Um, without further ado, let's start with the uh, superintendent of Perry Schools, Dr. Jack Thompson. Well, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Kellogg. And uh, I so appreciate uh, your efforts to make this uh, uh, session happen tonight. And uh, again, we do want to make sure that people understand that uh, we're available uh, all times, not just this half hour this evening. Uh, all of our office phones and extensions are working. And um, if you were to make a call to any of our offices, uh, we're, we'll be sure to get back to you and, and email or in any other way that you would choose to communicate. And as, um, as we start to experience the phase in for uh, coming out of what has been a very difficult time for all and challenging for all of us, uh, I know there's gonna be more and more questions and, uh, but things are gonna become clear and uh, we stand ready, we've been planning, and uh, depending on what we're permitted and allowed to do, uh, you know, I'm confident in the staff that, that we have for Prairie Local Schools. Um, I'm so appreciative of our community being, uh, being there and supporting us through this, uh, all through this time, and uh, I'm sure uh, we'll continue to gain your support, which we will need uh, to get through this, and uh, so, we know we'll be reaching out to you. Uh, we expect to hear a little bit more uh, towards the end of May from the Ohio Department of Education and the governor's office. And then our plan is to reach out to you in June and hear about what your needs are so that uh, we can set to providing the most diverse uh, educational type of uh, platform uh, to serve individual needs of families uh, that, that we've ever seen. And so uh, again, it's gonna be a busy, busy summer. And with that, uh, I, uh, I can't wait to hear what some of the questions are, Mr. Kellogg. Excellent. All right, uh, let's go to Mr. Lou Galan, our Chief Financial Officer. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, I'm here to uh, maybe answer some questions people might have regarding any of the fiscal changes that might happen uh, to the schools or due to this uh, coronavirus. Uh, but just to reassure the community, we, we have long prepared uh, to be able to have a um, cash balance to be able to sustain the district uh, for any short-term impacts that might occur to a downturn in the economy, um, such as state budget cuts, such as um, uh, changes to um, the, the tax base, um, We've been dealing with the nuclear power plant issues of tax base for years. Um, so we do have a cash balance on hand. We are prepared for a downturn in the economy. Um, just quickly for some numbers that we know so far, uh, we do know that from our state foundation um, that we will see a reduction in the fourth quarter of, of this school year from the state of approximately $375,000. We also know that we'll have a federal reimbursement associated to that of 142,000. So a net difference of about $230,000. Um, we do expect that there might be some uh, timing issues associated to delinquencies and tax collections. We know there's a lot of people out of work. Um, and we know that um, we may have to deal with some changes to the delivery of instruction as we have already. Um, but we are well prepared financially to deal with some of those changes as, as they come forward. So with that, I'll pass it back to you. All right, thank you. Let's go to uh, Dr. Betty Jo Melchewski, Assistant Superintendent. Well, good evening and thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, I'm here tonight to help you with questions that are about instruction and the many topics that stem from that. I did wanna say, and you might've heard me say before, it, uh, we never planned for this moment, uh, but I do, I'm so thankful for the district for the means of technology and the one-to-one -one that our students had. I, you've probably heard me say before, never did we dream we were, would have a need at this type of a level, but um, here we, we are and um, we were able to deliver instruction in a remote way. I look forward to your questions tonight. 
Great. And finally, let's go to uh, Mr. TJ Rockwell, Athletic Director. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, yeah, welcome everybody this evening. Um, I'm here to obviously talk about our athletic department and where we're at from an athletic event standpoint in the state of Ohio. Uh, and here's what I can tell you at this time. Uh, late last week, the Ohio Department of Health came out with a mandate that all schools and their facilities, both inside and outside, remain closed through June 30th. The OHSA then followed up and went with uh, the Ohio Department of Health in saying that uh, there is a no contact period for our coaches as long as school facilities remain closed. Um, so while that's not the news that I know everybody wanted to hear, um, we are a member school of the OHSA and obviously we're gonna follow those rules to a T. Um, so at this time, we can have no coach contact with our student athletes other than uh, Zoom meetings, emails, phone calls, et cetera. Any type of electronic communication is allowed between our student athletes and our coaches. Um, and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll await further direction from the Ohio Department of Health and the OHSAA as to what we're going to be looking at here uh, moving forward once July 1 comes around and what the fall will look like and so on. So. I look forward to the questions as well, and we'll answer them to the best we can. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rockwell. So uh, uh, you you are the lucky winner. You're going to get the first question here. Um, All right. Someone wants to know when our, force, our, our fall sports will be allowed to do summer conditioning and practicing. Yeah, well, that'll just follow up, I guess, on what I said. You know, right now, uh, at this moment, uh, mm -hmm. it is July 1st. Um, that is the first time that our coaches can have face-to-face um, -face contact with students. Uh, that is when, at, again, at this moment anyway, we can open up our school facilities and, um, you know, have our teams and coaches and athletes get together. Now, again, that can change. Um, as, as we all know throughout this entire process, um, starting back in mid-March, it was a very fluid situation, and it remains so. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that changes, uh, you know, maybe not daily anymore, but at least weekly. Um, we're getting updates, constant updates from the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Um, I'm in constant communication with ADs in the Northeast District um, and Commissioner Jerry Snodgrass, the Executive Director of OHSA. And so, again, we'll look to to those people um, to give us those to give us those answers and, and those guidance, and uh, and we will follow those. Uh, so, at the moment, we're at July one date. That's the earliest that we can do anything. Um, if it changes, uh, whether it's, you know, pushed back further or moved up, obviously we're going to let our student athletes and our coaches know. Um, I, again, been in constant communication with our coaches as well, to keep them updated. And we'll send emails out to all of our, um, you know, student athletes, coaches, et cetera, as soon as we know. And along those same lines, uh, we have a question here. What is the contingency plan uh, to run if the school year start is delayed? Yeah, if the, if the school year start is delayed, which, you know, I've heard a lot of different scenarios throughout uh, the last several weeks, again, being in different meetings, um, you know, with, with OHSAA and with different ADs, um, we've heard about a delayed start to the school year, obviously. Um, that would, I'm, I'm almost assured, would impact our ability to start um, athletics on time which is set right now for August 1st, as most people know, for fall sports. Uh, that is typically the first day that we can have uh, a mandatory practice for all of our fall sports. Uh, that would likely be in jeopardy if, if we're going to delay on any type of, um, you know, long, how long that would be. We just don't know. And that's, you know, we're, we're going to continue to, to work with everybody as close as we can in the state uh, so we can be informed and then pass that information on to you uh, as soon as we have it. Uh, next question. We, we got a lot of these. Uh, wondering how we'll be getting our yearbooks. A lot of people looking forward to having yearbooks in, in, in all the schools. Uh, Betty Jo? That's an important one, especially for students. I, I understand. If you haven't already, you, you will be receiving a next communication from your principal with all the dates of pickup times and things that will be occurring um, the week after Memorial Day weekend. So uh, look for those, those letters from your principal. I do know that there will be um, pickup times May 27th, 28th, 
May 9th, so forth. So look for those dates, um, especially for those yearbooks in your principal's um, communication. I believe the high school communication is already out on that. Um, question here, some students don't do well with online learning. Uh, what are plans to ensure a student or their grade isn't penalized because of it? Uh, Betty Jo? That's a couple questions there. Let, let me start with the survey of the Friday feedback has been invaluable. Us. Thank you to everyone who has participated in that and our responses have tended to increase over time. So keep those coming. Um, our culture playbook says we, we intentionally use that information to adjust and adapt. And um, what might be for one family just the right amount of work will come in on a survey as not enough and too much for another family. So really that, that the hours of the work um, and students doing well or not is, is very independent, but please continue to utilize your teacher as your first uh, means of communication. Students, if you're listening to this tonight as well and old enough to make sure those emails to your teachers are invaluable, that communication directly to your teacher. Our teachers have been res uh, responsible with office hours, with responding to emails and quick time to students. So it takes two, it takes all of us together, but make sure students as part of your learning, as you're old enough, parents, if they're uh, young, younger, um, please utilize that email and make sure that what we're delivering, if it's not uh, fitting your child right, that we hear from you right away and we can adjust as that goes on. I think I heard you say another question to that. Would you repeat that, Mr. Callow? Um, and, and here I just saw what are plans to ensure students grade isn't penalized uh, for, for that. Good question. So our motto has been, even since we left mid-March, that this term three was never to penalize, excuse me, term four as we were leaving term three, was not to penalize students and what was unprecedented times for, for learning. Um, so for those students that we, that have, are engaging in the work, our goal is to not penalize the grade from past, past practice. So if term three grade should be very similar to the term four grade for students who are engaging with the work, keeping in touch with their uh, teachers on work that they do not understand and getting the help they need. For those students, and there's not many, uh, but those students who have not attended or we do not hear from in a responsible way weekly, those grades will, will look like the work that they have put into that. I hope that was clear enough. And if not, be sure to ask me um, a question on the other side. Uh, this one will go to you too, Betty Jo. Uh, a question about the total number of classes have only been one to two hours per day for the most part. Why is that, I'm assuming, in comparison with you know an eight hour school day? You know, I, um, that kind of goes along with um, what I mentioned before is what, what's one to two hours for one student is actually three, four, five and evening hours for another. Um, so it's really relative to the student, but uh, please stay in communications on that. We kind of need to know where we stand um, with what's just right and not enough for our students. So again, that first line of communication to the teachers, but we have really um, used quite a bit of things to look into how we can improve in this manner. It is not our attention to, um, intention to assign work and leave kids to simply complete that work. Our, our intention is to have X amount of minutes for teaching, for being there for kids to be on their own for practice and then give them the means to get the responses and the questions they have answered. So I, I, I hope families and all of us can kind of see that there's, there's teaching, there's practice, and then there's time for intervention and support. Make sure you're utilizing all of those times for the question though, if it's one to two hours per day, um, we need to know that for those individual students. It was our intention at every level to have specific subjects at the elementary school, all core subjects at the middle school, all core subjects at the high school to be offered in, in all subjects at the high school to be offered in a manner that gives them that direct teaching off for time for practice and then of course, extra time for intervention. But we need to know how to adjust and adapt for any student that um, needs more or needs more. Um, Dr. Thompson, this, this one's for you. Uh, what are plans to improve the student experience and interaction if remote learning uh, continues into the fall? Well, again, uh, we work very close with our teaching staff. Uh, uh, they've been remarkable and their ability to uh, quickly um, transform 
into uh, a venue that that uh, prior to this they had never done in, in many in many ways. And so, you know, uh, we continue to be a district that believes in professional development, and uh, you know those those days have always been embedded in our staff's contracts. Uh, they continue to be embedded. We've taken additional days this year um, and provide and where we plan to provide in service. And again, uh, now that we've been through it, uh, you know, that, that week after Memorial Day, it's our hope that we sit back and get a chance to reflect on, on what went well and what went wrong and begin to plan to take action uh, to improve in those areas that we identify um, as an area of need. And so uh, it's no different than what we do in any time as we serve the community and our kids. And we're always trying to get better every single day. And we do that with uh, reflection, with good, strong, critical feedback and, uh, and, and hard work and, and nothing there is gonna change. Um, so, uh, another one to you. What are plans to ensure more time is put in with students so they do not fall further behind next year? Is school going to start earlier? Uh, we, we don't know when school's going to start earlier, later. Uh, we know it, it will start, though. And, uh, and, and again, what, what this uh, time has really kind of laser focuses in on is we need to be individualized for each, each student. And so, you know, it's our, it's again, it's our plan, it's our hope that, uh, you know, that, that as we learn what the student's needs are, uh, we come up with plans to provide intervention, enrichment, and those things that they need. Um, if at the, you know, we, we've kind of adjusted our schedule a little bit uh, to, to give a little bit of breathing room uh, to our parents that have been, you know, teachers probably like they've never been and at the end of this and so kids can kind of gather up there and get their makeup work done and, and decide where they're at and and we're not opposed um, as a district if 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 between staff and students that connection needs to carry on through the summer uh, we would be happy to develop plans where we continue to work with kids throughout the summer uh, we know where we current, uh, currently are with uh, our government orders that we're not going to be able to bring kids on campus until June, past June 30th. Uh, but that doesn't mean staff and they're permitted to come on campus in an organized way as long as we maintain safety. So, uh, you know, for us, school will never end. And if there's students out there that uh, would benefit from not ending either, uh, we're willing to do what we can to continue to serve those kids. And so again, it, that's why it's so vitally important that uh, you reach out to your teachers, uh, to your principals, uh, to the people you see on the screen and communicate your needs because uh, we're gonna do everything in our power uh, to help. If I just like to add on to that is a summer stretch in the past as we know it has been kids coming to school. Um, we intend to use our federal grant funds, that 21st century money that uh, we have at all three schools, those that funding string to uh, support kids who do need um, some, some gaps closed in their learning. Um, you can look forward to hearing some invitations from um, elementary and middle school principals on that end in terms of uh, students that may have fallen behind and the invitation to them to continue learning throughout the summer. Um, all right, uh, Dr. Thompson, if school is open next year, will kids be given a choice to continue online school? And, th and this is for parents who may not be comfortable with uh, sending their kid ba back to school if schools were to reopen. Yeah, you know, uh, this has been on, uh, is, this has been a kind of a, a piece that, that has been, uh, we've been looking at for quite some time. Again, we wait for guidance uh, from the state on, on what, what the compliance issues are going to be. Uh, but that's where this June uh, gathering time of information is going to be so important because part of that needs to be uh, for our, our families with children, school-aged children, to do a self-assessment of where they are and, and at home as far as maybe having, you know, grandparents or, or other students that, that may be considered high risk. And then, you know, take a close look at what they would feel would be comfortable uh, to continue the education that, that we need to do, but yet yeah, do it in a way that's safe. And so, um, you know, again, 
uh, I expect uh, that uh, we're going to be able to, um, you know, comply with those requests in a way that's going to be uh, the best situation possible, knowing that uh, while remote learning can be effective in a lot of ways, uh, you know, I think we're really missing quite a bit when it when we're not being able to physically interact uh, on a daily basis with our students. And, uh, and so obviously that's the hope, but if if there's situations out there that aren't going to allow that, we're certainly going to accommodate. And uh, last one to you for a little bit, and I'll give you a bit of a break. What has the district been considering in their return to school plan model for fall 2020? Well, what haven't we been considering? Uh, you know, again, certainly we look at the PPE requirements as far as, you know, we, we put in some, some orders that, that we, that we, we're pretty strongly know that that we're likely going to need to use. Uh, uh, we've we've ordered uh, a number of additional cleaning apparatuses, some uh, electro uh, static sprayers. We have nine of those coming in for to allow us to disinfect at a level that we've never disinfected before. Uh, we we have uh, the the two ply uh, masks coming in. We also know and are learning. You know, those with a shield uh, can get get you to that N95 caliber uh, without without having the hard the hard level of breathing that sometimes it takes to use an N95 mask. And so uh, we're learning uh, all those type of things. Obviously, uh, plexiglass barriers in certain places where there's lots of, uh, you know, foot traffic as far as interactions with the community. Uh, very controlled visitor uh, guidelines. Uh, having, uh, you know, obviously we're going to have to spread out our clinics. Uh, it won't make sense to have a centralized clinic uh, next next year. So we likely believe we'll probably have clinics at uh, all three ends of our, our district. And then again, choreographing that foot traffic so that we can make sure that we're traveling in a way that is uh, most safe. And then the gathering requirements. And so we're going to have to limit our numbers uh, likely of, of any any certain number of people in any given place. And so uh, that's going to, uh, you know, uh, be a very interesting plan. Uh, but we know with, uh, with the, our square footage in our buildings and the kind of campus that we have, uh, that, that we're gonna be able to accomplish these things uh, at a very, very high level. So again, while it's very still murky, uh, the, the fog is beginning to lift. And uh, we're starting to get some ideas of what we're going to be able to do. Um, you know, bus transportation is a big issue. You know, you've heard numbers coming out of uh, CDC and uh, as small as nine on a bus at any given time. Uh, certainly taking temperatures is something that I think has become common practice. And, and so we've, we've ordered some of the additional instruments of that type. Um, and we're also working with consortiums too, uh, to uh, Lake and uh, Java superintendents uh, um, and also Ohio Schools Commission to try to get those at, at a reasonable rate and in a timely manner because it's not only uh, being able to order them, it's like when are you going to be able to get them and so sanitizing chemicals and and I could continue to go on and on so uh, uh, we've been preparing and uh, you know thankfully uh, if anybody knows our maintenance supervisor uh, you can feel rest assured that uh, he was planning for a day like this when yeah. no one else was. And so uh, we, we feel very fortunate with our inventory and uh, we're ready to start tomorrow if, if uh, given the go ahead, but uh, we know that's not gonna happen. So um, uh, we'll be ready. Awesome. All right, moving uh, to the finance world, Mr. Gallant. <laughs> how much was saved by the district during the closure uh, remote learning period and how does the savings compare to the state cut for the fiscal year? Uh, well, we're still in the midst of it, so we really haven't, um, uh, we don't have final numbers on anything like that yet. Uh, let me, me kind of give you some of the things that we'll say, areas that we'll save, but maybe why we don't know numbers yet. Um, we're going to save in the area of um, electricity and uh, gas um, by not having people in the buildings. But we're on a level billing where we get billed monthly and then we get a true up at the end of the year. So we don't really know the full utilization until the end of the year. Um, we're gonna save on supplies. Um, we don't know what that number is until really the school year is done. Um, 
we're going to save on fuel, fuel associated to the buses, uh, driving routes, uh, fuel going to athletic events. But again, we buy, we buy fuel thousands of gallons at a time in our tanks. And so until we really can gauge how much is left and we can take inventory of that, we really don't have a handle on, on those numbers yet. Um, it, on the expense side, we know that we had, as Dr. Thompson mentioned, we have some, some things that we had to purchase to prepare for next year. Um, the, the cost savings that we're going to see, I'm, I'm sorry, one of the other areas is subs. We're not going to save on subs because we haven't had the use of subs during this period of time. Um, we know that, that we have a, a net loss over this period of time of revenues of about a quarter million dollars. So the savings that we can attribute to subs and fuel and, and uh, utilities um, certainly aren't going to amount to that. But as I, as I kind of started out saying, um, we're, we're prepared for a downturn in the economy, something that um, this isn't, although the pandemic is unique, a downturn of the economy, a reduction from the state is not unique. Um, so we're cer certainly going to cost us dollars associated to this, um, but it isn't something that we won't get past. So I'm sorry I don't have a better answer, but it's really hard to calculate in the midst of it. And tying into your closing there, the next question is assuming we see additional state cuts next year, the 2021 fiscal year, what proactive steps is the district taking to protect our programs and services to students? Okay, so, so first of all, we don't know the numbers, but we will be getting state cuts. It, it came out today um, to anticipate state cuts for next year. Um, that's been speculation, it's been talked about, but the um, Department of Education doesn't have numbers on that yet. Um, so it, I think it said in the, in the memo that they are reviewing several scenarios um, to hit their budget numbers and then they'll, they'll pass that down. Um, so what are we doing as Dr. Thompson planned or talked about, we're planning in several different areas. Um, we're talking to the bargaining units. We're starting the planning process with the board of education. Um, we are, um, we are looking at, at all the scenarios and, and however we're going to deliver instruction, we're going to plan for what the needs are associated to that. So again, it's, it's murky, it's, it's, it's unknown, um, but we're starting to throw up the different scenarios. We're starting to talk about what are the requirements that we have in each of those areas. Um, financially, we're prepared to not make um, knee-jerk uh, decisions. We have the, the financial resources to, to wait and see uh, where we're gonna go. And that gives us time to do good planning rather than hasty planning. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep at it. We'll look at all the scenarios and we'll, uh, we'll budget and we'll staff accordingly. Great, okay, we'll uh, get two more questions in here. Uh, we've got time for two more, but uh, if you have more questions, don't worry about it, send them, send them our way anyway and we'll make sure someone at least reaches out to you. Um, next question, I, I think this will be for uh, Betty Jo, Dr. Malczewski. If the next school year is partially online, will there be guidelines for the amount of face-to-face -face time, especially for the high school? We know that it's a big difference between teaching and assigning. And we wanna get better at making sure that our teaching time is exactly what our students need. So uh, with that, is my internet off? <laughs> a little choppy. Okay, testing, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. All righty. With that being said, I think there has to be uh, requirements in terms of some teaching um, times. And again, to know that that may not be enough for some students and what students can do and what families can do when that teaching is needed uh, beyond needing additional time, questions answered, repeated instruction. We've learned a lot in this time. We've learned a lot that um, good teaching and is, is probably age old is that it, it doesn't always happen the first time for all people, adults included, right? So some of the, the, the greatness of video instruction that we've been able to do more of now can be um, turned on at any time. Meaning I, I got the first time, I might need it to do in time three before I understand um, that high school instruction. So uh, yes, we'll work forward, to, forward with that. Um, 
throughout the summer and we hope to make that more transparent to you and to get your feedback on that as time goes by. Um, but yes, I think, I think there needs to be uh, so that we can have the consistent practices that we've, you know, we always envision for teaching and for um, grading and reporting and all of that. So yes, and we work through that as time goes on. Um, all right, last question here, and uh, I'll throw this one to either uh, Dr. Melcheski or Dr. Thompson. Uh, current kindergarten kids miss their music program. Uh, can they make this up in the fall as first graders? I know that's a really popular program. Well, again, we're uh, we're certainly. I know Mrs. McMurtry, and I, it was, it's my favorite of a show of all t all shows, and I go to a lot of performances in a year, and uh, you know though those kind of pieces, um, there's no replacing them. And uh, we're certainly gonna do our very, very best to uh, provide uh, our students with the long lasting memories that, that, that schooling provides for them. Uh, you know, the class of 2020 is going to be forever remembered as uh, they were already special, but uh, they've been so gracious during this time to do what's right in the, in the name of being safe uh, for their fellow uh, uh, students and for their families. And, you know, we'll just continue to try to honor them. And, and, and certainly, uh, you know, uh, we can do some more performances and, and uh, we're happy to do those things. And, and this has been a time for ingenuity and creativity. Uh, you know, some, when challenged this way, uh, great things do happen. It's just no fun while we're going through it. And so uh, there's going to be some some wonderful events, and and if if we can have that program, you know I'm all for it. Uh, you know for you know tomorrow uh, is our last day for the class of 2020, and at 3 p.m. Uh, I hope the, the the whole community comes out and and provides them with the senior honk out that that they deserve, and and we'll you know we'll honor social distancing, and we will we'll, we will not gather, but. Uh, we will be in our cars and 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 waving them a you know final uh, goodbye as they leave our campus and, and move on to great great things in the future. And so um, I just hope uh, you know when we get to the other side of this and time passes, uh, we all when we all look back, uh, we'll be able to pull some fond memories out of this ordeal and not just the uh, the rough times that it's caused. Uh, and, and that's my hope. All right, before we go, does anyone have anything else to add? No? All right. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. Yep. Again, if you, uh, if you have questions, um, feel free to submit them to any one of us, and uh, we'll either answer them or send them to the person who can, and, and we'll reach out to you. Thanks again. Thank you. Go thank you. Thanks. Go Pirates.